All right. Uh, today, I want to give you examples of kiln work and what it does to glass. It's all well and good to learn about target temperature, hold time, annealing time, and all of this, but it makes a lot of difference if you can see it. So I have a series of glass strips, which this is nothing but a clear strip of glass, which you can't find the match to. No. Anyhow, Tectica, I use uh, bullseye glass exclusively. Um, took a plain piece of glass, uh, made some little strips out of these, a couple of clear, transparent, and three opaque to show you what you can expect. I did this in a Paragon front loader. And a word of caution here, I have also a top load Olympic. Uh, they don't do exactly the same thing, although they both have Bartlett controllers on them. The results are not exactly the same because there's a temperature variation. And this is something you have to deal with when you get a kiln. Uh, you can start using preset programs, but what you really have to do is figure out what your kiln does. All right, the first I took, laid out my strips, set my kiln at 1400 to get a tack fuse. Uh, this is the result of them by themselves. You can see that the edges are rounded, the tops are flat, and on the clear glass they still have pretty much that same shape, but they're tacked to the base and they're not going anywhere. At 1450, which is my normal fusing point, uh, simply because after working with it, uh, this is my choice. This is much smoother, but you can still feel the glass. This is at 1450. And the little pieces are flattening out still. Uh, however, some of them are beginning to round off a little bit more. Then I went to 1475, which is a higher fusing point. You can see it fused. Uh, you're beginning to see a little distortion according to what the, the effect that the samples have on it. Uh, they're beginning to disappear. I can still tell where they are, but it's getting much smaller. And these by themselves are beginning to do their own thing. You see how they're beginning to round? They'll do more so as we go along. But this is just to give you an idea that you do have choices in how you deal with your glass, but the only way to figure it out is to do it. Then I took it to 1500, which is getting close to a flowing temperature where it will turn to a liquid. By now, I can't tell where those bumps are. They're gone. And there's more distortion here. And lo and behold, all these little pieces 
have pretty much done the same thing. Now they're little dots. Okay? We started out with a flat piece that is three millimeters. Don't worry about numbers. I have a chart to show you. As we went from 350, I mean from 1400 to 450, we began to see a little bit of change. Just a little bit. Next, that was 425, I'm sorry, it's on the chart over here. We go to 450. And notice, it's changing, it's not as flat as it was. And you can tell that because the numbers are increasing. on all of them. And when we get to 1475, they're getting even bigger. And you can see the numbers. I'm giving it to you in millimeter because it's easier to read the little tiny lines. When we get to 1500, we've got the rounding of the dots. And look at this. They didn't start out exactly the same shape, but they end up with the same thickness. This is because of the surface tension of the fluid glass. Here is a little chart to help you get a handle on this. The changes when you use a little piece, this is the way you make the dots that you're going to use, is you cut little squares, put them in the kiln, heat them up to about 1475 to 1500 and you get little dots to use to enhance your pattern. You have to look out at those temperatures for more distortion, but it's good for some things. Now, you need to go to Bullseye website and look at Technical Notes in Education. They have an excellent description of heat work. In the next video, I'll show you an example of heat work that is visual. Thanks for watching.